A warning this morning about car seats, not the kind you put your children in, but the ones you sit on. Experts say in certain crashes, some car seats can break and collapse. That can lead to, paral to paralysis or death. Chris Van Cleve is in Washington with an investigation you'll see first on CBS This Morning. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Even if you bought a car with a five-star safety rating, if you're hit from behind, your seat may not protect you or the children sitting behind you. Every day, on average, three children are killed and 470 injured in accidents. 11% of those child victims are in rear seats, where the government recommends children sit. 16-month-old Taylor Warner loved the water and was just learning how to walk. She had about six weeks that she was toddling around, and then it was over. Five years ago, the Warner's 2010 Honda Odyssey was rear-ended at 55 miles an hour. Taylor was in her car seat behind her father. I thought maybe she had just fallen asleep. And then when I looked and I realized that there was blood coming out of her face, I knew that something else was wrong. That something was her father's seat back. It broke, collapsing on impact and struck Taylor in the face, killing her. And it was all because of some stupid car that we thought was the safest thing we could, you know, get for our family to protect them. But crash tests like this one show what can happen when a seat collapses. The driver is launched backwards and slams into the child's face. Drivers can also be injured when their heads crash into objects in the back seat. 70-year-old Geneva Massey was paralyzed four years ago when the seat of her 2002 Dodge Caravan broke after the minivan was hit from behind. You just assume that they'll not break. You don't even actually think about it that they would break. Nearly every American and Japanese automaker has seen similar recent cases. How often does this happen? Every day. Auto crash expert Alan Canner has been examining seat back failures since the 1980s. We hired his lab outside Philadelphia to test the strength of seats and the standard that regulates them. Why are we looking at a banquet chair? What we're trying to do is show how absolutely ridiculous the federal standard is. This is the only test required to pass the federal standard, putting a brace across a seat, attaching it to a winch, and pulling. So that passes? That passes the standard. With standards so low, Canner finds all vehicle seats and even that banquet chair meet or exceed the federal requirements. But failures like this can still happen. Do car makers know this is an issue? Yes. They've actually known for decades. In a 1996 deposition, a General Motors engineer admitted GM started tethering dummies to the seats during crash tests because the dummies were expensive and the chances of losing them were pretty high. Improving the seats wouldn't be expensive. One engineer being deposed said strengthening them would cost on the order of a dollar or so. This is a belt integrated seat. Longtime accident belt investigator Ken Sicholsky has been trying to get the National yeah. Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, to, to require stronger seats since 1992 when he spoke to Ed Bradley on CBS 60 Minutes. It's an inadequate standard. It's uh, flawed as far as I'm concerned. Has that changed? No, it hasn't. It's basically the same today as it was then. It's a worthless standard. It does nothing for the consumer. It does nothing for the industry. Auto safety regulator NHTSA's own researchers also warned of the issue back in 92, citing examples of major or fatal injuries when seatbacks collapse. The agency also had the results of crash tests required for other safety standards which showed seatback collapses in 30 mile an hour rear impacts. Despite that, NHTSA does not require similar tests for seat strengths. If you can't talk to them about it, who can you talk to? No one, I guess. NHTSA declined to speak to 60 Minutes, saying only the agency was investigating ways to strengthen the standard. That was in 1992. We've known for years. That in 2000, then NHTSA administrator Sue Bailey told CBS News the agency would be looking into the seatback issue within a year. It's not appropriate that we are working off of 30 year old standards. But 15 years later, the standard remains the same as when it was written in the late 1960s. This is the lumbar pad. The agency it's stopped even, looking into the issue the in 2004. Just... Current NHTSA Administrator Mark Rosekind didn't have time to sit down with us, so we caught up with him. Sir, Chris Van Cleve from CBS News. I need to ask you about the Bermuda Lake Seven seat standard here. We're going to go. We're going to go. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna and go. the tendency to fail in rear end collisions. Um, we've been trying to get a couple of minutes with you, sir. Happy birthday to you. They had changed the government safety standards to where. 
you know, the seat back wouldn't fail, then we would still have a six-year-old running around. How do I, as a consumer, know if I've got a strong seat or a weak seat? There's no way of knowing as a consumer. You want to go get in? Liz and Andy Warner don't take any chances now. Go climb in and then we'll come buckle you. They make sure their three surviving children are buckled into the middle seats or third row, far away from passengers whose seats could collapse. I'm sure everybody who buys a car would pay $50 more to make sure that this doesn't happen to them. I know I would. The Warner and Massey families settled their lawsuits against those car makers. The automakers say their cars are safe, meter exceed all federal safety standards, and have improved over the years. For its part, NHTSA says it didn't have the data to support changing the standard. Since we began investigating, we have found nine children killed in accidents like the Warners. That's more than the number of people killed by faulty Takata airbags. Nora? Oh, my goodness, wow. Chris. What an incredible investigation. Yeah. So eye opening. So People want to know what kind of cars do they recommend that don't have this issue. Our safety experts say BMW, Mercedes, and Volvo have stronger seats in all of their models, all of their makes. Okay, well, that's very it. disturbing. And to know that in, in, in Chris's piece, that a dollar on each seat could could solve the problem right. makes no sense. Right. Very thanks, important. Thanks again to Chris and our investigative team for mm -hmm. that incredible reporting. Thank you so much.